Hey all, this is Martin from How to Make Mobile Games. Hope everyone's having a great weekend, have a great week and having fun building games and doing programming and not too busy as always. Uh, so this is part two of the 2D platformer video at Developer Diary and I'd done something extra on this the past few days and so I wanted to just kind of update people on you know how it's going and, and probably if you've seen this video a little bit later after the game's already live then just talk about how the process was and you'll give you a little bit of insight into the game development process. So um, I think the last thing I was talking about was just the general sort of gameplay. What I've done over this past couple of days is I've started to add a little bit more artwork and character and animation to the uh, to the game. So why don't I jump in and hopefully this won't run too slow and I'll also make it large on the screen as well so that you guys can can see it a lot clearer because the character is pretty small at the moment. So let me show you. I think the controls on this left and right side here, these are the two new things that you're probably noticing. So this is basically the joystick, left joystick on the um, on the on the mobile, and then the right button here is the jump button. So I've also included some sound now, which is a which is an 8-bit uh, early sort of like Atari 8-bit or, yeah, well not Atari, but maybe NES sound. So every time you jump it makes that sound. There's also some walk animation now on the on the character. And the character himself, himself is still a little bit early at the moment. I, I need to figure out how to make this look better because it is so, so small on the screen. And it looks a little bit strange the way he's walking at the moment. So uh, the other thing that I updated as well was the, uh, was the font. I was looking for a... Um, this font here, this level complete and all of this best time font up here. I was looking for something that which was kind of retro and 8-bitty and this one looks pretty good and it looks kind of fits well I think with the with the overall style of things. Uh, and I also changed this background here, this this level complete pop-up which uh, is like has a little bit of transparency in the middle uh, and then some borders around the side. So if I play the next level, you can see here I've not changed this yet, I still need to update this one. And I think that's pretty much all the major changes that I've made um, this past. Or oh, can I make it? Yeah, I can. This past uh, couple of days, I, I've actually been really busy uh, this this past couple of days as well. The uh, the, the publishing business now that's strange. Sorry, I'm going a little bit off topic, and I just said something. Basically, what it is right now, one of the problems that I'm having is. Um, that the physics seems to be different from time to time. Like yesterday, I couldn't make this jump at all like over these two sort of uh, uh, cogs or, or uh, circular saws or whatever. That was like a really hard jump to make, but for some reason right now, I'm able to make this jump, and I think that might be a frame rate issue or there's something in the physics which isn't quite the same every time, and so that's something that needs to be figured out. Uh, because I noticed on when I was playing on my Android that I was able to clear those those spinning cogs like really easily. But on the on my Mac yesterday, playing it on the on the Mac, the the jumps were really 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 hard. So I've got to kind of figure out how to how to do that. Um, I'm also considering publishing these videos before before the game is actually live as well. Just uh, I think that might be cool just to to get some feedback as well from from uh, the community and. and the viewers of the channel that might be that might be interesting because sometimes I'm so blocked for creative ideas or I'm so blocked for like the next step it's really it's really a tough thing as well and I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do it and I, I'm actually considering like sort of naming levels after some of the the viewers or, or you know maybe people that have sort of contributed towards the game a little bit so this level would be called you know um, uh, Jakeness or something like that this is a uh, Jakeness High if you're watching he does reviews of our other games on his YouTube channel, so that's really, you know, really cool. Big shout out to to Jake. I hope you're doing well. And um, so yeah. Anyway, the uh, I'll try to maybe maybe take a look at some code here uh, to show you guys kind of how it's doing, how it's been done, and, and uh, maybe maybe show you a little bit of that. So I don't I don't want to make this video too long. It's more of a developer diary, and it's more of a general audience kind of thing. It's not a tutorial. So I don't want to dive in there too much, but I'll I'll quickly show you this character. This might be something which um, maybe is relevant for, uh, well, it will be relevant for those of you who, who are in game development and who are looking to maybe do some kind of platform or physics-based game like this. 
Uh, but basically here, this is the main character script. What this does is it um, moves the character around when you're jumping up and down. Um, what I do with the character is to get a character moving is using physics, using forces. Like for example, if, if this is a this is your character, you apply a force, and it slowly picks up speed and then and then slows down. So there's a little bit of inertia, and there's also it also responds to things like gravity and um, uh, friction as well. So what you need to do is have your game objects here, like the character, and you need to have this rigid body object on here, and you can set things like the drag and the, and you know use gravity. You can also freeze its position, which is cool. You know, so if you don't want it sliding like forward and backwards, like we have a, a 2D game here, we don't want it to slide forward and backwards. We want it to stay on the same plane. So these constraints here are really useful. Uh, the way that you actually move a character is you. Da, da, da. So here, for example, if I if I tap the jump button or or P on the keyboard, then I call jump character, and what I do is I add a force. There we go. So basically my rigid body, which I'll just show you here, my rigid body is the rigid body, so it just it keeps that variable so that you can use it later on. And I'm not going to explain code right now. This, this isn't a beginner or tutorial thing. I think maybe I think guys who have some programming experience will understand what this is. Uh, so my rigid body, add force, and then um, uh, choosing the direction, which is vector three up, and then the force multiplier. So that's basically we I can I can set the force inside of Unity and say oh this you know the jump isn't very high I need it higher so I can make it a higher number or the jump is too high and then adjust that uh, you know in the editor and then force mode in pulse which basically just says hey just push this guy once you know don't don't continually apply a force every frame just apply a force just once so it's like you're sort of just pushing something instantly and then it moves which is which is uh, fine for a jump. The other force that we use in here, if I can find it, is in the fixed update function here, this one, which is basically a, a physics, the physics fixed update. So if you apply a constant force, for example, if you want something to move constantly across the screen like this, using physics, um, using the built-in physics engine, then you have to do this in fixed update. Um, so that it, it adjusts the time from frame to frame, and I think it's because it becomes frame rate independent. What that means is that my Mac runs at a, fa a faster frame rate because the CPU and the, the GPU is faster than it does on my old Android phone. But of course on both devices we want the experience to be the same. We want the, the character to move from A to B to take the same amount of time going from A to B on the Android as it does on my Mac. So that's why this is in the fixed update function here. So what we do, uh, I won't explain this joystick part here but what we're doing is just uh, my rigid body to add force and then we're saying okay vector three dot left so I want it to move left on the screen and then times in it by the distance that the joystick is from the from the center point to where the player is tapping the uh, tapping on the screen so basically what we're calculating is the middle of this joystick here is zero if they're moving left all the way to the left is uh, one and then uh, all the way to the sorry, all the way to the left is minus one. All the way to the right is one, so that we can we can uh, judge how fast or, or uh, you know does does the user just want to like move a little bit or do they want to move all the way? So that's why that's why we've got this here. So we're timesing by the distance from the center, and then we're also timesing by a move speed as well, um, and that's because. Uh, uh, they're two separate things is how how far they are from the center and then how much how fast do we want the play, the character to move based on how far to the right their thumb is or how far to the left their thumb is so that's all you have to do is my rigid body to add force and uh, you know you can play around with the variables and uh, it's really easy to get things sort of up and running in in using physics and it's a lot easier that way and the physics is a lot more natural I could sit down and program this uh, as a non-physics character uh, and you know say jump like the position is y plus one plus one plus one and then it looks like it's jumping and then over time decrease it but you know we get a lot more smoother uh, interaction and we can also use collisions as well when we use rigid bodies so for example here how does this character when I click play um, he doesn't fall through the floor and he also he doesn't go through the walls he sticks like we've got right here uh, and if I jump, he sticks on the walls as well. That's because these walls actually have a collision in place. So if I just, uh, it's not moving very well. Sorry, my, my mouse doesn't seem to be working. That's okay. 
Anyway, if I go to wall, here I've got a box collider, so I'll just click F and zoom in. I'll just rotate the camera a little bit. And you might be able to see this green outline just here on the, um, on the edge of this uh, geometry. And the green outline basically means that it's got a it's got a collider, which means it will re, it will interact with real world physics. Now, if I turn, make sure if you do add a box collider, if you want it to react with real world physics, is make sure that the trigger is ticked off, because uh, ticked off. <laughs> make sure the the is trigger is not ticked, uh, because if it's ticked, it means that it just the if something hits it, it will just inter it will just make a script call. It won't actually physically interact with anything. So make sure this is off if you want something to physically interact in the scene, okay? And that's real simple, but if you do this, if you ever get a character and he's sort of going through walls or falling through the floor, make sure that this is off. Make sure you have a box collider on your geometry, like your floor or your wall, but also make sure that you've got a rigid body between one of the objects. So for example, a character here has a rigid body um, and that rigid body says, okay, this is a physics object and therefore you must interact with uh, colliders in the world, in the game world. So that's why it stops. If there's no rigid body on this thing here, then the character would just fall through floors and go through walls. So, um, you know, that's a, that's a really quick uh, sort of maybe a one-on-one on how how physics works with uh, with a with a ba very basic character in a very basic world inside of uh, inside of a game. And I think that's pretty much it. The uh, the only other thing is, I guess, the sound. Um, Oh, actually, let me just mention these things. These these uh, joysticks here that I've got, if I can just zoom out. So these joysticks I just put together myself. All I did was inside of Photoshop is I just created a, a 16 by 16 uh, uh, object here. So I've just gone to File, New, and then I've just gone, like, say, 16 by 16 because I want that old school uh, retro game feel. And the cool thing is that when you do 16 by 16... Uh, you know, you are get, getting that very sort of hard edge to everything. And I'm using this brush tool here. I'll click on B uh, and then make sure that it's the pencil tool is selected. I'll just make it a little bit smaller. And look at that, it's beautiful. So, you know, it's real old, old, old school. And my pixel art is, it needs to improve. But the good thing is with pixel art is when you're making it a 16 by 16, it you, it's not doesn't take too long to do. I found this to be actually quite a quick art style. And I'm not an artist, so that really that really helps me. And um, the other point I wanted to know is, uh, wanted to mention for for guys who are watching this and maybe want to do something similar in terms of uh, doing like a retro style game is in the jump button image uh, here. Sorry, this just for example, this this is this jump button here. Is when you import it from Photoshop. Is uh, what I'm doing is I'm choosing advanced at the top. I'm not generating the mip maps. The mip maps basically mean as it goes further away from the camera, then it will reduce the quality of that texture so that it doesn't have to render a, a full high quality texture. But since we're using an orthographic camera, an orthographic is a 2D camera, there's no 3D depth, uh, we need to keep the quality the same no matter what distance it is from the camera. So I turn this generate mint maps off. I also override here for Android and I make this a, a 128 and then I also make it 16 bit and 16 bit gives you that real hard uh, uh, edge that you've got that you can see right here. There's no sort of smoothing or anything like this. There's no anti-alias, uh, and it's not trying to reduce it down. So basically, you get this very uh, the hard edge look that I want to achieve in this game. And then the other thing is, I think just turn the filter mode to point. If it was bilinear, then it would basically it would try to uh, smooth out that edge. It would try to make it a little smoother, and it would appear a little bit blurry. But I want that hard edge, so that's why I click point 16 bit. And then I also make this, you know, I adjust the size, but you guys can choose what size you want to use, have a play around. And then obviously click apply. So I'm just going to revert, I don't want to change it right now. Um, but those of you who want to achieve some of this, this style of game, you know, I think, I think that's, a, that's a good approach to it. And it's pretty simple to do this kind of artwork. And maybe there is a market out there for this, maybe there's a lot of players who are interested in this game, I, I'm yet to find out. And I'll hopefully release a, a version of this pretty soon. And I'm, I'm sort of contemplating whether I should or shouldn't, you know, try to push it faster. I'm still trying to figure out what this game is exactly. Is it a, uh, is it a, uh, a game where you want to just get the best time? Is it a game where you want to complete the levels just as fast as possible and you want to get to the end? Um, 
so I, I might do a mix of both and there's still some things I need to figure out like the level selection uh, the objects that are in the game as well the character animation and things like this but I'm questioning should I should I put this out there first get some feedback and then just say to everyone hey this is a beta version or it's it's an early version please give us your feedback uh, and then sort of go from there and, and continually update and iterate it uh, maybe have say 20 or 30 levels in the game already and, and just every few days is just do an update because the levels can be constructed quite quick uh, which is why I've gone for this very simple sort of art style right now that you're seeing uh, the, probably the next step though is to add in some kind of background and the plan is for the background right now is to have some kind of procedural background and procedural backgrounds are automatically generated and random as well so I could have sort of you know wavy lines or some crazy background or something fairly simple but it um, it uh, it has some kind of random element in there so it looks different each time uh, and that's something I've got to play around with and I've not really done before but if that's my next step then I will do a video on that one as well but I don't, I'm gonna leave it there uh, if I do post this before the game is live I'm, I'll have a think about that then give me some feedback let me know what you think so far if the game looks interesting boring are you do you want to play it do you not want to play it or maybe some suggestions on, on what you'd like to see in the game yourself because I think you know getting feedback from other players is uh, much better than, than the stuff that I can just come up with in my own head. So anyway, I'm going to go now guys, I'm going to continue and I'm going to try and get warm because it's freezing in Shanghai today and I, wanna, I, I don't like it, I want to get warm. Anyway, have a great weekend everyone and I'm going to do another video probably later on some gaming because I've not done one in a couple of weeks. Uh, have a great weekend again, chat to you all soon, bye bye.